please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi there, good afternoon. You're watching Your Stocks. I'm Mangla Malu. With me is Sumera Abdi. Sumera, good afternoon. Looks like a very good afternoon for our markets because as we speak, the Nifty, the Sensex, as well as uh, the Midcaps, as well as the Nifty Bank, all the four frontline indices mm. are at the high point of the day. Earlier today, we were being dragged lower by a lot of these oil marketing companies. They've turned around. So the oil and gas index is actually at the high point of the day. Added to that, uh, we have all the IT stocks. In fact, Wipro is the one that should come mm. up for you, which has seen a bit of a spike and currently at the high point of the day. All right, so let's get started then. First up our top stories. The market trades the day's highest global risk on trade returns. However, rising crude prices remain ahead when pressurizing the rupee. Uh, the mid-cap index trades in line. Elevated slippage is expected to bear down on ICICI Bank's earnings this quarter. The street watches for any management-related changes. Bond yields fall as the Reserve Bank announces a surprise buyback of bonds worth 10,000 crores. NBFC stocks and PSU banks cheer. Pharma stocks, they are the worst performing in trade led by big losses in Lupin and Dr. Reddy's. From the broader markets, Walkout takes it on the chin after posting another quarter of losses. All right, just keep an eye out on the markets. Bharat Forge is the one which is currently moved to the high point of the day. Along with that, we have Voltas 2, which has moved to the high point of the day. And one of those companies, Sanvaria Agro Oils, they've released their results. And along with that, there is a board approval raising up to 400 crores for CapEx. It will be very interesting to see what uh, they go ahead and do with this CapEx, given the sort of rally that we've seen on that stock itself. And Sun TV, that one's moved too from the broader markets along with DCB Bank, which is closer to the high point of the day. And as we speak, a couple of stocks which are hitting the lows of the day as we speak, uh, Bharti Infratel, that one should come up for you. Bharti Infratel currently is sitting at the low point of the day. We're awaiting uh, numbers come by from uh, uh, ICICI Bank that will be happening later in the uh, uh, later in today's uh, day after the market uh, uh, markets end. But currently, ICICI Bank is at the high point of the day ahead of those numbers. Management-related changes is something that the street will be watching out for. Yeah, if at all. If at all, if at all, if at all. On the agenda. All right, uh, the company in focus now is Reliance Infrastructure. They've uh, proposed to build the Bandra Versova uh, Sea Link with a Staldin in five years. Lalit Jalan, the CEO of the company, now joins us on the telephone line with more on the contours of this plan. Mr. Jalan, good afternoon. To begin with, uh, could you talk about what's your stake in the JV, what's the timeline, when will construction begin, uh, what will be the revenue contribution and so on? Uh, good afternoon and thank you for having me on the call. Uh, so this is the Bandra Versova ceiling. It's uh, one of the largest uh, urban infra projects in India. It's a 17.2 uh, kilometer ceiling uh, with four outlets uh, connecting to the mainland uh, between, Barso uh, between Bandra and Varsova. The timeline for the project is 60 months uh, from letter of award, which is uh, on Saturday. And uh, we have already started the pre-work and immediately after monsoon, we will start work on the construction. Uh, and we expect to finish the project uh, ahead of the schedule of 60 months, which has been given to us. The total revenue of the project over the next four years, uh, uh, four, four and a half years, will be 7,000 crores. And uh, this will be straight uh, EPC revenue for us. So what did you say, Mr. Jalan, your stake in the joint venture was? It's a 50-50 joint venture with Astaldi of Italy. Uh, Astaldi is uh, one of the uh, world's largest uh, EPC contractors. It's the third largest bridge contractor with a revenue in excess of 3 billion euros. Okay, uh, we have a, uh, a researcher, Anisha Jain, also joining in. Anisha, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jalan, uh, to, uh, for speaking with us. So first up, I wanted to understand regarding the infrastructure business, your order book is burgeoning at around uh, 20,000 odd crores. You're getting orders right from uh, the power business, the road business, railways. Where do you see the strongest outlook coming from and where's the demand? Uh, how's the demand looking like? Yeah, so uh, with, with the current order, our order book uh, moves up to 27,000 crores. And uh, we see, uh, we have orders over the last uh, year and a half, we have taken orders in the power sector, uh, including the nuclear power sector. We have got the award from NPCIL. Uh, we have also got an award from NTPC for the fluidized ga uh, gas uh, defibrillator. 
Hmm. In the transportation sector, we have won awards in metros, railways, roads, and in heavy civil, we have won awards in tunnels and uh, mega infra projects like this uh, hmm. uh, Banza Varsova ceiling. We find, uh, uh, given the current situation of uh, the uh, private sector in the infra space, we see huge uh, demand for uh, EPC orders. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, between right. uh, mainly Government of India projects and uh, big state projects, we see almost 300,000 crores worth of contracts being given out year after year. And these will be across these spaces. Okay. Uh, so the other thing that I wanted to check with you was regarding the deal that you had signed with Adani Group for the Mumbai power distribution business. Now, there were some concerns that the deal might not go through given there were some red flags raised regarding the power tariff hikes. Can you tell us if you've got the approval from MERC or the Mumbai Electricity Board and right. have you received any cash consideration for the transaction? Yeah, so I'm saying let's just focus on the EPC business for this call. And we will have a separate time. We can discuss the Adani transaction and any other thing that you might wish on a separate call. But the, uh, since you have asked the question, mm -hmm. the the deal is totally on track, and we expect to close it in the first quarter. So the so other thing that I wanted to check regarding the infrastructure business was that there was a plan to bring in the Invit. It was filed last year as well. Uh, has that plan been shelved? Because we haven't heard any update regarding that. <laughs> No, on the Invit, what has happened is uh, that the market has not appreciated the product. Okay. So if you see the existing Invits uh, which are listed are selling substantially uh, discount to the value at which they had uh, given out. So we have shelved the idea of the Invit. So, sir, what are you doing now? Are you looking to sell these assets on a piecemeal basis? Uh, what are you doing to bring down the, your debt? Because you have been talking about uh, getting to zero level when it comes to the net debt. No, so, uh, even without uh, doing anything, I mean, uh, our debts have come down substantially right. uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And with this uh, Adani transaction and our DMRC award, we expect to move to uh, cash positive by the end of the year. What uh, is the total debt that, on We are uh, separately working to monetize our uh, road assets okay. and get in discussion with uh, some strategic players. What exactly is the total debt on your books, uh, Mr. Jalan, as we speak? The debt is to the tune of 12,000 crores. 12,000 okay, crores. So the other thing that I wanted to check was regarding the metro and the naval business. Now the auditors have raised some concerns regarding material uncertainty about the going concern capability of these two business. What is the I, resolution I, plan? Said, because you uh, have been able to take out uh, Reliance Naval from CDR earlier. There are arbitration claims that are pending. Maybe the situation will be better if you get the arbitration claim regarding the 5,000 that you have with Reliance Naval, 3,000 odd crores that you have with the metro business as well. As I mentioned, that uh, we had requested for this call only for the EPC business. Should you have any other EPC business questions, I'll be happy to answer. But uh, uh, no concerns with regard to, uh, no developments on uh, uh, the, the auditor's concerns that were raised with the company, sir? I don't think you're understanding my answer. I said let's focus on the EPC. If we have finished all the EPC questions, then we can discuss on all the other points that you want on a separate day. No, we understand that because the street is liking what you're saying with regards to the EPC business. The stock is at the high point of the day. However, it's our duty to inform the shareholders about the other happenings in the uh, company we will, as well. We will, right? definitely have a, we will definitely have a separate time to discuss all those issues. Okay, so coming back to the EPC business then, uh, are you going to focus on the HAM projects as well that have been floated by NHAI? And uh, what is the equity requirement for the order book that you have in right now? Is funding in place for the order book that you have right now? Yeah, so uh, it's a good question. So EPC business, by the very nature, is a negative working capital business. The equity requirement is not there. Whatever equity that we needed for having equipment, etc., is all already in place. The only thing that is needed is uh, some initial uh, uh, non-fund limits, which we have in place, so which is performance bank guarantees and advanced bank guarantees. Mm. And it will be a self-funding uh, business. So no separate equity requirement is there. So the reason so we have I all ask, the hmm. approvals in place. No, sir, the reason I asked it because you had recently taken approval for a QIP of around 2,000 odd crores. So is that something that might happen given the requirement? Or if you're saying there's no requirement, there might be no, uh, be no QIP in the near future then? No, no, QIP is an enabling resolution. Okay. And we do it for strengthening our balance sheet. Okay, sir.
All right, uh, Mr. Jalan, we leave it at that. Thanks very much uh, uh, for joining in. So that's uh, the word coming in uh, from the management of Rel Infra. We'll take a very quick break, come back in a bit. There's lots more lined up on the other side. In fact, we have uh, the management of Intellect Designers Arena who will be joining in to talk about the quote. Hi, welcome back. You're watching Your Stocks. Um, well, we have our two experts now joining in. Gaurang Shah and Prakash Gaba join in to answer all the queries that are being sent in by our viewers. Gentlemen, apologies for keeping you waiting. Uh, our query comes in from Bhumika C, who writes to us from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, she says she holds 265 shares of ICICI Bank, which she has bought at 300 rupees about uh, four months back. She's a long-term investor and wants to know uh, whether to hold or to book out. So she's making a bit of a loss right now. Remember, by ICICI Bank also reports earnings this evening. Uh, so let me first get Gorang in on this. Gorang, uh, uh, for somebody who's making just a tad bit of a loss, actually nothing worrying at this point, uh, what would the advice be, especially ahead of numbers, I mean, in a quarter, uh, which could turn out to be very, very crucial for the bank? Thank you, Sumira, and good afternoon to all of you all. Uh, well, it's interesting to see the stock holding up in the green, to be very honest, uh, given the kind of news flows that we've had in the recent past. And of course, more importantly, the numbers unfold uh, possibly post-market uh, this evening. Uh, given the fact that uh, she stayed invested uh, despite this, uh, you know, uh, turbulent uh, times, uh, we maintain a positive view from a long-term point of view. And to be very honest, I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers are as ugly as they are expected to be, given the kind of, of course, asset quality issues that the bank had to deal with. More importantly, Sumera, I don't know whether there is going to be any word on the leadership going forward from here on, uh, but we maintain a positive view from a long-term point of view, and I would advise continue to hold. And just in case, if the numbers are much worse than what the street estimates, and if there is a downtick uh, starting tomorrow morning, uh, if she has got investable amount, I would advise her to even average as well. But again, have one and a half year kind of time horizon. All right, one and a half to two years kind of horizon looks good for ICICI Bank. Uh, that's about it. Thank you for uh, uh, that, Gorang. But let's move on. We have Vinita M writing to us from Mumbai, holds 50 shares of Tata Coffee for the last 10 months at 162 rupees a piece. Medium term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. But Prakash, you know, Tata Coffee last year saw a huge rally. Then in the last one year, it is absolutely petered out, down about 30% from highs. What are the charts suggesting? I would hold now. Okay. Because it's, I've seen a good move this month. This should continue. It's up. I mean, sticking a support at a good support zone. I think it can go up to 160, 65. So if she wants to edge, she can edit here as well. I think it's going up. All right. Uh, thanks very much uh, for your quick take on that. Uh, the next talk on our radar now is Intellect Design Arena. The company has posted a good set of earnings this quarter. Um, revenue growth has been strong. Uh, profit is almost double. Arun Jain, the chairman and managing director of the company, now joins in uh, to talk about the quarter and the outlook. Uh, Mr. Jain, good afternoon. Thanks very much and congratulations on what looks like, uh, like a good uh, performance. Uh, to begin with, let's talk about your dollar revenue outlook for FY19 because between FY17 and 18, we've seen a substantial jump over there. Is that a trajectory that you think you could continue with? Yeah, I think uh, I'm speaking to CNBC and Investor from last 12 quarters since we started our public listed journey on CNBC. We designed the company for predictability, sustainability and profitability. Yes, it required a huge amount of investment up front, which investor didn't like in the beginning. But now we are showing 28% quarter on quarter growth on uh, revenue in dollar terms. And even CAGR over the three year is over 21%, maybe one of the top few companies in IT space uh, having a three year CAGR of 21%. So this trajectory, I think, will continue. That's what we have a confidence that we should be able to sustain the con unless some international event happen. All right, uh, uh, just hang in there. We have numbers from Dwarakesh Sugar uh, down, company posting a loss as against a profit. That was something which was expected given the way sugar prices have moved. And the stock has also corrected a goodish bit from the highs. So currently seeing some bit of uh, uh, extension of that selling currently closer to the lower end of today's trading session. Let's get back with our discussion with Intellect Digi uh, uh, Design Arena. You spoke about predictability, sustainability, and profitability. Good to see that on the bottom line, the company has turned profitable. 
So my question is with regards to your operational performance, you have shown an improvement in your EBITDA from a loss, it's turned profitable, but it's still single digit margins as against the other mid cap IT companies which do post double digit margins. So now that uh, uh, the improvement has come by double digit margins expected in FY19 and uh, 20? Sure, I think we should expect double digit margins uh, in 18-19. I, now the, our new revenues, we mentioned more than 50% should come to the, 50 to 60% should come to the bottom line. So the growth will translate into profitability much better. So if you look at it last year, the total revenue growth was 173 crore, out of which 103 crore came into the top, bottom line. Close to 60% of the 173 crore has come to the bottom line. And I think that's where the bottom line improvement will happen. But for the investor, I would still see that uh, the, our dominance in a four markets where our exposure to advanced market is 50% and 50% coming from the growth market. I think that's a potential for our growth and uh, 14 product and most comprehensive product, which is a destination product in FinTech space. And these are the two things which is driving our uh, acceleration to uh, look at it how, almost like 24% growth year on year since last year. Okay. Um, Mr. Jain, um, operationally, how much more headroom do you have? And could you also talk a little bit about uh, what has been the impact of uh, Indas accounting? Okay. Uh, I think from operation margin perspective, now we have a three operating levers. First operating lever is the license growth. License is growing at 32% on CAGR. So if that grows, license revenue uh, drives into the bottom line. Second piece of operating leverage is my sales SNM cost are almost close to uh, constant in absolute terms over the last six quarters. So then it's not expected to rise except the sales and marketing commissions which can be increasing the cost. And third lever is uh, my uh, R&D, GNA, all other lines are almost constant now. So everything is driving back to the bottom lines and my license price also keep on increasing because per deal price has moved from 1.5 crore to 3.8 crore per deal which we are doing it. So that's a uh, overall operating lever landscape which will drive in 18-19 and 19-20. The second question on index, I think uh, there could be a small uh, uh, we don't know as of now, it's since April 1st is the date on which we have to e evaluate on index uh, uh, and we mentioned to the investor, but it's not going to impact overall quality of the revenue. Uh, it's only a question of when, as per index, we can account as a revenue recognition versus uh, what we can't. So overall of a uh, growth prospect, we don't see any difference in index. Right. Uh, Mr. Jain, you know, I'm looking at your order book. It's close to around 1,050 crores. And additionally, you've also said there are 32 clients, uh, high, uh, active, uh, high value active pursuits. If you just take a look at the numbers, 50 crore, 30 crore, 20 crore, and uh, a bare minimum should be around close to around 900 crores in terms of the pursuits that you're making. That's as much as your order book right now. How much do you expect yes, to convert from these pursuits? So if you observe in last four quarters since we published this destiny deals and active pursuits, mm -hmm. these are, uh, we are converting um, f three deals last quarter we closed and few d every quarter we are closing two or three deals. So typically in these large pursuits, four to five decisions happen every quarter and last quarter we won three and we lost one. So if you go on that trajectory, we are looking, can we increase three to four? and it can give a substantial improvement over there. But three to four is a per quarter closure. So 80% of these pursuits, if we see them through, uh, say 750, 760 crore worth revenue coming in from them? Uh, over the period of time, so some of the pursuit fall it off because customer takes longer time to decide. So these are the larger deals, we are transformational deals. So all the 32, may not come through in the year itself. Some It may carry forward for next year, but if you're saying 80% win, uh, we would say 60% win on these pursuits will be more accurate number to estimate. 
All right, uh, so we leave it at that. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Mr. Jane, for joining in and talking about uh, your earnings and the way ahead. So importantly, Intellect Design Arena, the management remains confident that they could carry this growth trajectory ahead. And the stock now at the high point, about 7% uh, higher. A quick break. When we come back, lots more stock queries lined up for you. Well, closing in on that 10,700 mark for the Nifty, and that one's being led by the big boy Reliance. That one should come up for you. That one's at the high point of the day, leading that last bit of gain on the Nifty itself, perhaps closing in on that 10,700 mark. And from the mid caps, you have Parag Milk. That one's seen a bit of a spike, and that one too has moved to the high point of the day. So, with that as a backdrop, let's move on to the next query. We have Ganesh Kamath writing to us from Bengaluru, holds 100 shares of Pfizer at 2300 rupees uh, for the last two years. Long term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. Gorang, your view on Pfizer, not a stock that we talk about very often, but he's making 200 rupees a piece. Well, Mangalam, we had covered this stock uh, very, very long back, and these stocks, I think you should just continue to hold on to your portfolio. Uh, for uh, many, many years. Of course, not a very liquid counter, but uh, kind of business and product profile and earnings. Well, uh, I think with a four-year, five-year, six-year time horizon, your wealth will definitely grow at a much more faster rate. So continue to hold on. Prakash, what's your take? I think I like the structure. Structurally, is positive stock, mm -hmm. looks good, seen a good support closer to around 1900 zones, seen a good up move, and a consolidation around 210 zones. I think it's heading up. All-time high is 2,700. Looks like even that would be crossed. So hold on for a long time. All right, on that note, we'll wrap up then on your stocks. Do remember to log on to cnbctv18.com. Send us your queries. We'll address them. For now, quick break. Closing bell up next.